Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander, and it's time for Dusk Morn Top 10 slash 12 cards. Uh, <laughs> we're going over some of the most exciting cards Whoa. from Dusk Morn, where uh, we choose uh, three cards each that we're excited to play with. And uh, yeah, so join with me is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing? Ooh, I'm doing good. This set has some kind of crazy cards in it, so should be interesting. Tomer, budget commander, what's up? I'm doing well, deep into the previews and stuff and updating commander precons and whatnot. And I'm very excited to talk about some of my favorite cards from the set. Wait, I forgot, Tomer. Are you a scaredy cat? Do you watch horror movies? Do, do you I like, like the... I like cheesy horror movies. I don't like the really <laughs> scary ones. Like they're they're so but, they're so cheesy that they're comical, so you're not actually scared. <laughs> I watched I watched one of the Chucky movies when I was like seven because my older brother made me do it. And I like no no spoilers, but I couldn't sit on the toilet for like a very long time afterwards. <laughs> I was afraid Chucky would come out of the toilet and start stabbing me. A, a, a fellow but I don't like the horror. Adult. I don't like the scary ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh Krim, who apparently has no fear, loves this. What's up, the Asian Avenger? This is my set. This is the set I've been waiting for all year long. All the cute critters, yada yada yada. We got it all out of the way. Now we are here in my plane. All right. And I am the Codfather mm -hmm. Richard. And if I had a time machine, I would go back to my seven-year-old self and not go down to the, the gas station or whatever and rent child's play. That was a bad, <laughs> bad idea. There's a reason why it's like 18 plus or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, then maybe you I know, would actually I enjoy dolls. I watched The Exorcist with my dad when I was like six or five. Uh, that that oh, wow. may be okay. You may be too young to understand anything. <laughs> I don't know, man. A head spin around 360 is still still pretty scary, and demonic possession is still pretty wild. I grew up I like just fine. Stuff, like Evil Dead and stuff, I, which is, I think, what this this set is like mostly focusing on, right? It's focusing on the campy stuff, which is more there my is style. Is camp, yeah, yeah, and a lot of the the fears and nightmares. So I'm pretty excited. Hmm. All right. Uh, so before we get to today's episode, today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Guard, premium protection for your trading cards. Uh, all the gaming accessories we use on this channel are brought to you by Ultimate Guard. So check it out, ultimateguard.com. I wish I could put myself in a sleeve protector, you know, and protect myself from all the <laughs> <laughs> from the ghosts and, and, and creepy dolls. And also Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Uh, you can skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. The curator... Curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value of one dollar or more, and you pay just a five percent service fee. And you can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only two percent. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get ten percent off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtg goldfish. So thank you to our sponsors, and it's time for the ultimate guard comment of the week. So last week, uh, we asked, uh, is it a stacks piece? Uh, and, and we talked about stacks pieces. Uh, top comment, Layton Jr. 6601. If you have a game plan that results in winning the game, everything is okay. If you play stasis just to do nothing for 30 turns, we're going to have a problem. The thing is, oh, agree. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but if you put stasis in your deck, the thing is, if you put stasis in your deck, you got to cast it, right? Like, who has the self-discipline to be like, oh, I'm only going to play this if I win next turn. If you put stasis in your deck, you got to run it out there, and then you end up with those 30-turn games. So I don't know if I buy it. I don't know if I buy that you can safely run stasis in your deck. I don't if you're running like the Revy, the one that like untaps whenever you deal damage to a player, and you run stasis, then like, yeah, you, you play the Revy, you play stasis, you attack, and then I can't untap. I'm like, okay, I scoop. That's fine. You're good. <laughs> the problem is interaction, you see? Like, you, you cast yeah. Armageddon with the intent of reanimating your lands and killing everyone. And then someone exiles your graveyard. And then you've just cast an Armageddon. <laughs> and then you guys sit there for the next hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so not even ideal, though no. the intent is pure, uh, how yeah. often do you get to execute your game plan without anyone disrupting it? And once it's disrupted, it's all misery. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um... Duskmorn. Krim's like, it's fine. <laughs> Krim, Krim is fine with everything. Yeah. Krim likes misery. Uh, yeah, no, I don't, don't got to say much, right? I think we already know where, exactly where I'm going to go uh, with that. 
Yeah. Uh, all right. Dusk Morn. So we, we've compiled a list of cards we're excited about from both the main set and the commander set. Uh, I'm going to kick things off with Enduring Innocence. So one white, white. It's a two, one. Uh, it's enchantment creature, sheep glimmer, lifelink. When one or more other creatures you control with power, uh, two or less enter, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. When enduring innocence dies, if it was a creature, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. It's an enchantment. This is an invitational card. If I had to design a card, <laughs> perfectly, perfectly fit my play style. Enduring Innocence. You play it early, you draw cards, you wrath the board, and it comes back as an enchantment so you can keep drawing cards. Like, what? what is this? The cute little sheep, too, on top of that. Is this not just like power crept welcoming vampire? Like, this is, a, this is definitely a, one of the cards in the set that I'm probably going to be running the most, you know? Do you it's think very it's... Good. Is it how much more powerful is it than Welcoming Vampire? I've been thinking about this. So, like, the upside is if it dies to non exile removal, it comes back as an enchantment. Welcoming Vampire, though, it's a flyer. Better at flipping a dowsing dagger, maybe, or so forth. So, I don't know. Do you, how, how much better do you think it is, Richard? Is it like a meaningful upgrade or are they fairly close? It's way better. It also has lifelink. You know, you know how I like my incidental life gain, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, how. How often do you need the dousing dagger to Whoa. to have fly Whoa. to flip? Oh, I see. I no, no, no. What I'm saying is like uh -oh. this thing can flip. It's an attacker, so it can flip a dagger. You attack someone without a thing. And then even if it dies, even if it dies, you're fine okay. with that because it comes back as an enchantment. <laughs> you, you didn't lose it, right? So I think this is a straight up. The, the, the downside is it's double white. So it's double white generic. Uh, so it's harder to cast. But other than that, I think it's it's actually just a strict upgrade. I guess it dies to like Bane of Progress or something, whereas Welcome oh, being an enchantment. It. But but then it comes back, yeah. <laughs> but like so Tokage is welcome, right? Like it's like the same kind of deal, right? So yeah. I, I think this is a straight include in like tons and tons of white decks. Yeah, it, it's a really good I'm, card. Yeah. I mean, Welcoming Vampire shows up in a ton of white decks, and this probably just goes in right alongside it. Yeah, yeah I don't think you necessarily are cutting one for the other. You're just playing them both, right? So now you have more redundancy. And could, like this way, this effect is a little bit stickier than a welcoming vampire, which will die from a board wipe. So, yeah, I, I do think this is a power crept version of that. But I also kind of think Duskborn as a whole is just power creep. Not that that's a bad thing. This is like, by the way, I think there's a common misconception with that. But I think this whole set is a lot of power creep, and this is one of them. It's acceptable power creep to me. I'm mostly, I'm mostly just surprised that there's sheep. Is this like, <laughs> the first sheep we have? I don't know. I don't know any other sheep. It's goats the, the sheep. The goats were getting lonely, I mean, so now we have some friends. Yeah, I know goats. <laughs> goats exist, but I didn't know there were sheep. Is this the first sheep? Let me know in the comment section. <laughs> All right. Uh, Seth, hit us up with the card. I'm going to hit you up with a card that I honestly don't know why they printed, because I feel like this card is just like incredibly broken, and that is Kona Rescue Beastie. So Kona is a 4-mana four 4-3 four legendary beast survivor, and it has the survival mechanic. So if it's tapped at the beginning of our second main phase, we get to put a permanent card from our hand onto the battlefield. A permanent card, not even a creature card. This drops Omniscience or Portal to Phyrexia. So I will say, as a commander... I think it's very scary because you can build around it, but it also kind of limits what you can put into play with it. You can still drop Eldrazi and Blight Steels and so forth, which is really, really brutal. And I feel like this is going to be kind of an unfun commander to play around uh, against because it's so easy to have like a spring leaf drum or a vehicle or a saddle creature, any million other things to so just play this and immediately tap it and just drop an Eldrazi on like turn three or something. It's also very intriguing in the 99. I think that's where I'm most excited about it is playing in the 99 and then you can play omnisciences and all these other really big things. It feels like a very fill card to me, but also what do you think of this card as a commander? Like this is a card I honestly feel like might not have been good to print as a commander because I feel like it's going to do one thing really consistently and that one thing's going to be putting Eldrazi into play on turn three <laughs> and it doesn't even die to sorcery speed removal if you have a way to tap it so it's not even like you can interact with it during your turn and stop it the Eldrazi is just going to be there so what do you think about this card in general <laughs> I think the play pattern will be you'll do exactly as you <laughs> mentioned you'll yeah. put the Eldrazi in you'll do all of that you'll do it like 
fun for the first 10 times, maybe. And then after that, you're like, okay, I'm kind of bored. I immediately, you know what I mean? It's like the blue, it's like the blue black player who starts at Eureka, realize Eureka's busted, scraps Eureka, goes to the next one, and then eventually ends up at like Marvo or something <laughs> like that. So, this yeah. this part is going to be just like that, I think, for the green player. This is going to start off, it's super busted. You're going to do super busted things. Then you're going to get bored. Or maybe you're not. Yeah. But, hey, I think the play pattern is going to be very similar. So this is just one of those commanders where, yeah, it's strong, but it's kind of boring. I I I think this is exactly uh, Krim absolutely nailed. It. I think the card is fine because like we've just seen so many of these before, and it's like if you want to do the busted thing, you can go ahead and have fun with it. Like for example, Prismatic Bridge is kind of one of the the most popular version of this, in my opinion, where you run the yeah. Prismatic Bridge and then every single upkeep you flip like some game ending threat. You cheated directly onto the battlefield. And it's like okay, yeah, we know what it does. Very cool. If you want to do that, it's like it is fun. It's very battle cruisery. Like this card, this commander is very battle cruisery. Prismatic Bridge is very battle cruisery. But it usually just like stomps the table if you're like playing like more chill tables. And it's it's not very interesting to play for repeat games, at least personally speaking. So it's like, yeah, if you want a, a version of Prismatic Bridge that's mono green, go for it. Like same thing with like a polymorph deck or whatever. If you if that's your sort of jam, by all means, it's just another option for that play style, which again, it doesn't really appeal to me, but like, if you like it, then go for it. Y'all overhyping Kona, man. <laughs> I mean, really? it's wrong, but okay, here's the thing, okay. So it triggers at the beginning of your second main phase, right? Which means mm -hmm. you actually need to cast it during your first main phase and then pass priority into your second main phase. So if you have instant speed removal, it still gets this. Right. So this is not like a, you know, on my turn, I hold priority. I do all this and like it just insta put something in. Uh, having said that, it's quite easy to tap. Right. So if you have like haste, you can attack. Uh, if you convoke, uh, if you have like those mana rocks, like, Vehicles. you know, there, there's, there's artifacts that you can tap a creature you control or lands that tap a creature you control to to do something. Uh, but it still dies to instant speed removal. And I think most people will play this wrong. They'll they'll try to like jam it out on turn three or four. You know, they you go like far seek into Kona. Not far seek, your mono green do far seek. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your nature's lower <laughs> into Kona, right? But it's not that scary because you only have seven cards at this point. What are the odds you actually have a game ending bomb in your hand? Right? So I think the the, the right play here is to actually sculpt your hand and then on turn seven or eight drop it and let combo win somehow i, I don't know what the combo is but i don't think it's like aldrazi cross your fingers and hope you untap but you could like draw 10 cards play a galta with kona dump your whole hand call it a day right like i so i think this is like a combo deck and not a fair cheaty deck and i don't think it's good in a non-dedicated deck, deck? <laughs> I don't what know. is a fair cheaty deck? A golf like, deck, it's like, right? Like, <laughs> oh, uh, I know at least like two, like just instant speed, one mana, per give your creature indestructible and hexproof, right? Like there's Tamios something something, and there's Tyvars something something. I think you just have a bunch of those, and then you have like a vehicle on the battlefield. Oh, you play this, you tap this it. Too. Yeah, yeah. there's so you also have lands. It, it is it is stuck with your hand, right? So you need to have the protection spells. You need to have the thing to tap it, and then you have to like, like hey, a makers. four card combo or three yeah. card combo, it's, right? Yeah, so it's, it's not, not as scary. Point. Hold as on, it's hold on. It's not as scary oh. as prismatic bridge, but like but you it's know, not that hard that as you're scared. making it sound. No, it's bridge scarier, is way like, scarier. Prismatic, no? prismatic bridge, but bridge is only upkeep. You have to wait an entire turn yep. cycle. Your and opponent has to be cool fit on the battlefield for an entire turn cycle. Yeah, well, you right. So you got to wait a whole turn cycle to dodge all the sorcery speed removal. And isn't it random? Like you just you could be hitting a mana dork. You could be like you're not guaranteed to hit good. anything good with it. Like we've seen isn't Phil. Remember the Phil like cascade no. into cards he can't even cast that he does all the time. Like that's why it was with Prismatic Bridge. So I think this okay. is way scarier than Prismatic Bridge. I was discounting five colors better than mono green, but like just if it wasn't for the color identity stuff, I think this card's way better. I think like I don't know. I think it's really scary. Yeah. I think it's are, are you going to jump in a random deck though? There's no way, right? Because you need to put the tapping support in there. So, like, if you want That's to play with hard, omniscience, though. 
You gotta get a Civic Commander, get this card, get your tapping thing. So it's like very inconsistent, right? But do you need omniscience? I mean, you, you like gotta remember that one of the tapping things now. is a land. You can easily play holdout settlement. You can easily play survivors encampment. Uh, you just play it like how like I would I played my Ryu deck, and that's not hard. Two of the tapping mechanics are already attached to a land. Vehicles are cheap. There's lots of easy ways to tap this. I think this card is genuinely pretty scary. I mean, it's gonna. Luckily, only put whatever. Okay, maybe not only. It's gonna put whatever Mono Green can put in, which is still Eldrazi. But I don't know. I I think this is pretty scary and pretty easy to get off. I think you're definitely underestimating how how easy this can go off. I I will say though, there are a lot of green cards that do this. Like a lot of cards that just randomly like tap or cheat stuff into play. And I don't know why we just don't see that many of them played in Commander. But like once in a while, I'll just look at a card. I'm like, oh, this is just put a thing into play. Why does no one play this? <laughs> right? Uh, like, like I, I know last well, March. Let's just go with like probably the best one. That one. Well, the, the old one, the OG is cards. like Quicksilver <laughs> Amulet, right? Or whatever the four cost four cost artifact. Pay four mana. Put an apartment into play. That costs mana, and I guess that's just too slow. And it's on an artifact that has to sit around. This is that, but without the mana, right? Yeah, with Amulet, you're still playing, like, eight mana altogether, right? So if you're getting an Eldrazi, like, yeah. sure, you get, like, a three mana discount. But if you drop an Eldrazi off this, you're, like, ramping seven or eight or something absurd. Or you just drop a Zendikar Resurgent, and then you start, like, just playing a bunch of creatures. Mm. And you have Next Boom. Mana. Next Boom Ancient. Mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. too fair. <laughs> just win. You got to win <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> something with yeah, the Galt of Yeah, that's oddly too fair. That's that <laughs> fair cheaty fine, thing Richard's bro. talking about. It's too fair. You still die to a board wife. <laughs> you got to finish the game. <laughs> Your three-card combo can't rely for you to untap twice more, right? That's too much. <laughs> okay. Uh, Krim. Hit us with a card. <laughs> <laughs> to okay, so naturally, I, I I'm gonna choose this card as the first card to bring up because what if Sword of Body and Mind could be your commander? Oh all right, all right, you with me? Are you all still Even with more me? More okay, I got now. you. I can see why my... Koda's overpowered if this is your commander. <laughs> <laughs> you say what you want, Richard. Okay, but I found it, everybody. Sword of Body and Mind has a, a an actual creature version now, the Mind Skinner. Blue, 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 legendary enchantment creature nightmare. Can't be blocked. If a source you control would deal damage to an opponent, prevent that damage, and each opponent mills that many cards. It is a 10-1. So, this is each opponent when it connects. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter who you hit. Somebody, everybody's milling 10. And it re oh, you'll everybody. never have to worry about dealing commander damage because, well, it prevents the damage. Because who wants to win through commander damage anyways? That's boring. Now, let's talk about playing my what have I told you all? Mill is 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 just blue burn, right? And that's true because now you're just setting everybody at 300 life and you're going to do work. <laughs> it's not that hard though. It's not that hard. You slap you slap a a double striker or something on this. That's kind of funny. Uh like we're now milling 20 here. I don't know. I like this card. I personally like this card. I think it is a 3 mana 10 crib. Like, I'm not blocking anybody. It is a three mana <laughs> ten one. You spent three so mana bad. and didn't affect the board, <laughs> and you're gonna <laughs> continually use your further turns to not affect the board. Is that not just you're the actually, most negative tempo you've ever seen? You're, you're actually well, I never said that. I never like, claimed oh, this was a tempo deck. <laughs> you're fueling my graveyard strategy. Thank you. Ooh, you okay, all right, all right, okay. all right. I, I got it. Laugh this, at this, it. Is, this, is, this is what happens, okay? We, we father son it. Okay, you play Mind Skinner. You get Double Strike and pump it. And then I will play something that can't prevent damage. And then you Stop. can one shot someone. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, like a red card that can't red. prevent damage. Yeah, yeah. there's no, the there's no mono blue. artifact that does that. Is there? Can you do this in mono blue? Can you I, don't, you can't, I, I don't think no. so. No. But why would I want like, to do that? Because that's boring. If I wanted to just hit you <laughs> and kill you through normal commander damage, I could do it so many other ways. But <laughs> mono now blue I've Voltron. Got... <laughs> yeah, mono Not blue even... Voltron. The mono blue way. Milling you out. The honest if... day's work. If this was like the mirror, I'd be so on board because then you could like you have access to all blocks reanimation effects on your opponent's stuff. Like I'd be like, hell yeah. Yeah, you fill everybody's oh, life. You don't even self mill. Stuff. It's opponents only, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, what are you doing oh, with this? Oh, you all are thinking way too <laughs> small <laughs> picture here. What are you doing with you this? You slap. Okay, let me, let me, you know what's on curve? You go Mind Skinner. 
Then you go turn four, Cherix, boom. This is pretty much an honorary crab, right? So now okay. you got Cherix in this mono blue deck. You're cooking. Let's say you pump that to that Cherix. <laughs> Whoa, that's a mil 15 or something maybe in the late game. Or nine or ten. <laughs> Plus the mind skinner. And then you play Cherix oh, and you're still 17? not dead. <laughs> yeah, but if you pump well, the Cherix. Cherix kills people. At least it deals Yo, damn. No, no, no. Oh, wait, no, no, it doesn't. People. It doesn't. Right, Replace yeah. the K doesn't. with an oh, M God. in kill, and that's what we're here. Wait, wait, do. okay, so what do you do is you play Cherix, and then you gut shot your own Mind Skinner, okay? And then you can kill people with Cherix, and you're like, boom. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's thought the terrible. Damage, you thought the damage would be prevented, but boom. Mind you, Skinner's okay. on the mouth. That would be funny, right? I don't the block. Mind game. I don't block. Yeah. Because it's going to be like, you no block. can't block. I'm not going to take you the damage. can't block. <laughs> oh. Read that on the Mind Skinner. You can't even no, no, no. block this card. On top no, of you, that... You, I, okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, unironically, unironically, what if you just use it as a Voltron, but like as a, you know, what's that one drop that's unblockable, like Skither Blade or whatever? Like, like yeah. what if you just use this as a Voltron piece sure. where you equip so? Oh, the swords it don't work because the, the damage, damage is prevented. prevented. No, yeah. <laughs> no, it doesn't even work. You don't get. You don't think oh, I oh, equip Dowsing Dagger? Sure. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay. What's what's the uh what's the throne from Kanza Tarkir? Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon Throne oh, of Tarkir. Yeah, yeah. You slap team. that bad boy on the the field here. <laughs> what does the throw do? Uh, it gives it, it all, give... all your creatures. You could tap the creature. It gives a, its equipment. Gives the creature uh, defender. You can like pay two mana, tap it, and then all creatures you control get all other creatures you control get uh, plus the, uh, power and toughness equal to its power and trample. I so actually, like, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's I actually, bad, think actually, that's the most. <laughs> that's not like, bad. Th I think that's the most legitimate yeah. use of this card. He's like, also, like, if you're not playing as your commander, any of the draw equal to power cards. This is a three drop with ten power. So there are shenanigans here. I just don't know about actually milling people. Oh. Out okay, what, what, what if I okay, gave you okay. guys to Orcish Bowmasters? What if I give you that? Look, what do you feel? Sometimes about you the die to Orcish one? Bowmasters. <laughs> that's just that's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. You know what's funny? Because of that, I I was like, oh, what if I loaded this deck up with Tim's? Timmy's or whatever, and then you just tap him and ping people down. But then my concern was that what if it got one of those Timmy's got reanimated and then shot my own? <laughs> You're done. I'm sure I, I, people gonna reanimate I <laughs> Prodigal Sorcerer. I am sure that this is what will happen. But <laughs> dude, I, also you have not of this world. By the way, not of this world is free to cast with this stubborn denial, dude. I'm a, I'm, I'm gonna show you how it's done. No, this card. I, I will tell you, this I'm is excited. one of my most anticipated Commander clashes ever because I want to see. What I'm excited cool. for you. <laughs> I, like, I, I, am, oh, I am at my ooh. Michelin star restaurant. I got my like bib on. <laughs> I'm like, chef, show me something hot. I'm ready. <laughs> right oh, now. I got to be, be a dad. I've got an These are all like one out of five. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> I want to, I just remember when I hit you, I want to hear, yes, chef. All right. <laughs> when I hit you and you're getting milled, yes, chef is the only thing I want to hear after. <laughs> all right. Uh, Tomer, hit us with the cars. All right. Uh, weirdly enough, we have no green players at, at this uh, podcast. So I threw one a bone because this is probably one of the strongest, most anticipated cards in the set, in my opinion. And it is a green card. And I'm not going to be personally running it, but I know a lot of people are excited for this one. So it is Hedge Shredder. This is a four mana green 5-5 five, five artifact creature um, vehicle. No, no, artifact vehicle. There we go. Uh, whenever it attacks, you may mill two cards. Whenever one or more lane cards are put into your graveyard from your library, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and that's crew one. Um, so the the main part here is the Mind fact that whenever you, <laughs> yeah, combo, yeah, yes, <laughs> this, is, this is another reason why I'm very excited to play against Mind Skinner. Um, it's whenever one or more lands, because a lot of people read this card, I remember, and they were like, oh, I can only put, like, I mill 10, and then I only get one land. It's like, no, mm. you get all the lands you mill. So if you, like, traumatize yourself, or you, like, mill half your library, round it up, all the lands you mill this way are going directly onto the library. Like, this is a ridiculous value for four mana. It's great in any sort of self-mill deck. Um, obviously, in any lands deck, too. Like, if you're, like, Lord Windgrace or whatever, you're, like, discarding lands. Oh, well, I guess, like, I'm going to... Uh, well, that that put doesn't it... work, right? It has to be oh, a wait, mill. Not, not discarding lands. Uh, so it's, whatever, like, Sidisi or something, right? Yeah, Sidisi. Like Sidisi self-mill. Yeah, yeah. 
Sadisi, any a mesmeric orb. If you're running a mesmeric Ooh, orb mesmeric deck, orb. any sort of like that. If your opponents are running Mind Skinner, very good. <laughs> um, yeah, this card's. You know, no, nuts, this can't right? be your commander. You know that, right, Tomer? <laughs> okay. I'm just letting you know yeah. that. So, so I, well, what happens when this head shredder gets milled? Okay. <laughs> and your graveyard recursion. Valid <laughs> well, oh. get recovery back. <laughs> oh, 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 hard playing against a blue deck, which is very <laughs> weird. Oh, this card's like hilariously broken, right? Like, it seems just like so. Very good. I'm glad that it only goes in certain archetypes and not in every deck. I think that's the saving grace of this card. But I'm pretty sure if you're a self mill deck, this is the best card in your deck now. Like, by probably a significant margin. Like, the amount this can ramp you is just... I don't think we've ever seen a card like it before. Like, the traumatized thing is, like, probably put half the lands in your deck onto the battlefield, which is <laughs> absurd. That is just absurd. So I think this is, like, one of the best ramp cards ever, ever made for the decks that can use it. Dredge is going to have a feel. How many green too. south mill decks are there, though? So, uh, so this this only uh, goes in South Mill, right? Like you you can't just put it in a normal green deck and then call it a day, right? It, it kind of is scuffed, right? So yes. it goes into like Sadisi type decks. Yeah, maybe you got, like black, black I decks. Mean, I mean, isn't like I guess Kavari? the question is just like how Simic. Yeah, like how much self mill do you have in your deck is the question. I, I'm almost wondering if it's worth building around. Like, is it strong? It's only one card, which makes it tricky in Commander, right? So it's one of a hundred cards you have access to. Can you find it consistently enough? But I feel like the upside is so high that it's almost worth like warping your deck to some extent to take advantage of this. No, it's just like you, so you powerful. Dredge cards in your random green deck to run Head Shredder? There's no way, right? This has to be your primary win con of your commander to put this in, right? Does it? What if you just tutor up the Traumatize and put 20 lands into play on turn five and you're like, all right, like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's keep playing Magic. But it, it, like, it's a two-card combo that none of the pieces do anything for you otherwise, right? And th there's no staples that self-mill, right? Like, there's nothing you'd be running normally that self mill is there uh, not uh i guess not outside of like life from deck. the loam could theoretically be a card you play in a random deck that dredges yeah i mean there's some stuff that's not that bad that you could play but it's stuff that normally doesn't like make the cut there's a lot of like Seder wayfinder like play this mill get a land type oh, of fact like you can play a lot yeah, of cards yeah. like that and they're kind of fine but they don't normally show up outside of self mill which i think is good i think it's Her good that it only works in self mill if it went every deck this Hermit card would be a Druid. problem Hermit Druid's like a full on combo. All non basic mm. lands, and he's mm. just like, put them all into the battlefield. Delicious. It is bad with MDF. There's a saga of Mesmeric Orbs. Wait, oh, Mesmeric Orbs 2 mana. Hmm. Well, Mesmeric Orbs 2 mana. I don't Ultra know, like dimension. Moldrotha, like self milling. Sadiqi oh, is probably the most common one. Uh, maybe get Rog Monster because it has like a bunch of dredge lands and st like the dredge land is a key piece and a oh, lot yeah. of like, the dread cards are key pieces. Uh, you've listed some it, very it, popular it's commanders. Specific. This is going to run rampant. <laughs> <laughs> it's specific, but like the, if you can run this card, then it's very good, right? Yeah. You could also do scuffed value play where you just play this, crew it, and then attack, and then you probably ramp one or two anyway. So even in the most scuffed sense, it kind of does something, right? So you don't need like all the combo pieces on the battlefield mm -hmm. for this to do work. Yeah, I mean, how many lands does it need to get to be worth it? Like two? And you've built a two. reasonable ramp spell? So that seems kind of realistic, even played fairly. Yeah. And, and hold on, this thing... Oh, I just... Ah, oh, it's on attacks too. <laughs> yeah, Mind, so it. sort of body mind can play around this by not hitting that player, but mind skitter builds everybody. Done, done. <laughs> yo, me, yo, okay. First off, this, this, is, this is this is this, this is what the anti meta is this spear campaign on on. Okay, all right. I'll show you how it's done. I'll show you all how it's done. I I totally picked this one at Rin. <laughs> uh, all right. It was like the alley um, from Crim. <laughs> Aborant Oculus, two and a blue. It's a 5-5. Five five. Uh, the creature type is I. As an additional cost to cast the spell, exile six cards from your graveyard, flying. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, manifest dread. Uh, this card is incredibly broken, in my opinion. It would be an auto-include in every blue deck if you're trying to be sweaty, right? But I think you're just not going to run it because it's, like, off-theme and, like, too powerful, but... The there are a bunch of green creatures that do this, right? The green creatures that like add a creature to the board and everyone's upkeep. Uh Verdant mm -hmm. Force, 
the dryad. I don't remember any of their names. <laughs> Tender shoot dryad. Yeah. Uh, there, there's the gnome making thing in white. They're incredibly powerful because it's army in a can, right? You, for like five mana, you drop it down. It makes a creature every turn. This thing is a three mana five five, and it manifests dread, um, which is oh we haven't talked about manifest dread. If you if you haven't been following previews, uh, you look at the top two cards of your library, put one of them face down as a two two, the other in your graveyard, right? So it fills your graveyard, and that card can be flipped up if it's like a, a good card. So mm-hmm. it's insane. Right, and the the only stipulation is you have to exile six cards from your graveyard, but that's fine because, you know, normally you don't slap your win con down and turn three and call it a day, right? You play the game. Oh, a bit, you, you do ramp. actually. It's called the mind skinner. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, interact, okay. and then on turn six or seven, you slap it down with counter magic backup or protection or whatever, and you probably have six cards at that point, right? So I think this card is just straight up insane. Cool. So you think you'd play this and just like. And you could play it in like any deck as your finisher, because I kind of see this yes. almost like we were talking about with the the head shredder. Like in a self mill deck, it seems really good. Or like if I really care about face down creatures, maybe I find a way to like support my graveyard to make it work. But I'm a little worried. I don't know, Scab Ruinator. It always comes back to Scab Ruinator for me. It reminds me so much of like that restriction of not being able to cast it unless you have six cards in your graveyard. It really scares me. I remember people being so hyped for Scab Ruinator, and then no one ever played that card because it was just too hard to make it work. And it's kind of formatted. That was sixty really. cards, though, Seth. <laughs> but no one plays in Commander think, either. <laughs> like you could play Scab Ruinator. Five, six. <laughs> Seth, also, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What did you what what did you do during that previous season? You must have quadrupled down on something. <laughs> Scab oh, Ruinator. That was, was like before was MTG finance that play was before that failed. I was making content. Yeah, that was that was a long time ago. So before you're making content, so let me get this straight. You bought 52 play sets. <laughs> I, I might have a pile of them ready. somewhere. There might be a pile of them somewhere. <laughs> but they were only $25 a piece or something, so it was fine. Oh, God. <laughs> But seriously, I, I, I does, does that like not intimidate like... you, Richard? The like having to exile cards, is that not an issue? Okay, how many times are you going for the win before six cards are in your graveyard? Like you 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 guys are all like overestimating like how much stuff you just play like six spells, <laughs> like just like six peer spells, right? Like ramp card draw, whatever, right? And you guys were like dunking on sunken palace for like requiring delirium. This is just six <laughs> cards. Like this is like way easier. And like, I don't know. Garbage, though. <laughs> what? <laughs> I feel vindicated. Like, I don't know. I don't like, everyone's like, oh, fun. you need to be self mill. I'm like, no, you don't. Like, you guys are thinking of like playing this on curve to win the game, right? Yeah. But like, who does that? Like, you play it on curve, it dies to a Doom Blade, and then you move on, right? Like, you, you play the game, you ramp, you draw cards, draw protection, draw your counter magic. And then when the coast is clear after the second wrath is snapped, for three mana, you put this down, you hold eight mana up for interaction, right? And then you're like, okay, go guys, can you deal with this, right? And then every turn that passes, you're getting a new card and you're fueling the graveyard. Uh, So I think this card's cracked. I, I don't know. I, I, I like it, but I, I definitely am leaning towards, like, I need to add some synergies to put it in. Like, either I can I can have, like, six cards in the graveyard very easily, like self-mill decks, or I'm running, like, all ten fetches or something to kind of help with that. Or I really want that face-down card. Like, if you're in Kadena deck, for example, which is Sultai Morph, being able to uh, manifest dread on your opponent's turns means you're also drawing a card every single time that's happening too. And that's just ridiculous. And I was thinking about taking, uh, getting a copy from my Trata deck, which is like assassins, but face down assassins. Ooh. So putting more face down creatures also just really, really good. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I am like Seth a little bit worried about that. You got to exile six. I, I agree. It's like, you could play it like later on and that's fine. Yeah. Like, I think it, most of those are casting are like, in my eyes. It's like paying for life. Like, yes, there's some, co- there's some life you need to pay, but in general it's free. Right. Like I <laughs> but feel it, this it's, is it's not like free. cast six spells because like if I cast six permanents, they're on the board, right? Like they're not in the graveyard. Yeah. And then one board wipe like, later, yeah. you got a born Oculus, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> But farewell, exiles. Farewell. Yeah. You gotta play around yeah. that. Yeah, but I, it's just like, well, there's a humility on the battlefield. You do nothing. I'm like, sure. <laughs> like there are some cases where this literally does nothing, but <laughs> I mean, I think Richard Plan does make sense. I could see this closing out games. I just want to be able to run it out on turn three. So I will probably only play it in decks where I can actually run it out on turn That's three. That's nearly impossible. Just, right? just <laughs> run it when Crim is running. Unless you're like actually self-building with spells. You can't run it out that early, right? It's like very hard. 
No, the mind skitter. You could you could play turn four after the mind skitter. In the crim edit, I just wait for crim to hit me once to migrate. Crim still needs to untap and attack you with it. Eddie somehow needs the triple blue because he's gonna draw like ancient tomb. And then give him a battle like turn twelve. All right, you. Seth, hit us with a card. All right, I I couldn't read this. I got one of the new one of the new room enchantments, which is one of the big mechanics from the set in mirrored room slash fractured room. And if you don't know these cards, they're kind of two enchantments stapled together, like a split card, and you cast either half, and then once around the battlefield, you can pay to open the other half. But mirror room in fractured room, the mirrored room half uh, is the cheap half, three mana. When it enters, you get to make a copy of target creature that you control. Uh, let me make sure. I'm... <laughs> the downside of these rooms. <laughs> you gotta read it like this, Seth. <laughs> yeah, I know. The down... I read them this way. But I'm sure sure reading this the text. Right side yeah. For us. <laughs> Uh, Scry I think Scryfall just has the text of it. All right, so <clears throat> so the mirrored room side, the cheap side, three mana, when you unlock this door, which is when you have enter the battlefield, if that's the side you cast, or when you pay to unlock if it's on the battlefield, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control, except it's a reflection addition to its other types, and then fractured room, the big payoff, seven mana, if a triggered ability of a permanent you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. So I know it's another panharmonicon, but this is the best kind of panharmonicon. This is worded in a way where it is not attack triggers or ETB triggers. It is anything that triggers, it's gonna double up. It's like a roaming throne, except it doesn't care about creature types. It's just gonna work with every single thing. And it works really well with itself. If you somehow get Fractured Room first, the room is a triggered ability. So when you unlock Mirrored Room, you get two copies of a creature instead of just one. So I feel like what we've seen from other effects like this, like the power of roaming throne and just how many things have triggered abilities, I think makes this a really, really powerful card that you can play in almost any deck. Like we saw that with Roaming Throne. Almost any deck is going to have triggered abilities. It is a lot of mana to get going, but I think this card is just incredibly powerful. I mean, I also had this on my list of things that I really like from the set outside of just the artwork. Cause I mean, I really like the artwork, but the second half of that, like the three mana clones already great. I really like Fracture Grown just because of the uh, doubling of any, like any uh, uh, triggered ability is huge. This is huge. This is from anything. So, but it, I am curious how seven mana feels. Like how to, uh, Terrible. that's the only thing. <laughs> well, okay, okay, yes. But remember, you're paying the going rate for Mirrored Room. So three mana to clone a creature is a cackling counterpart or a, like a typical rate for that. So uh, the way I look at it is, you pay the proper price for the clone effect in the early game, and right. then sure you're paying a tax on the Panharmonicon, but that's fine because you already got the mirrored room. So even if you never unlock it, you already got something out of the card. And then in the late game, when you got a bunch of mana, you open up and just win the game probably. So like the virtues, like yeah. like the virtue cycle, right? Yeah. From like Eldraine or, or like an adventure. Like that. I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we, I mean, we literally a have a virtue that does this. Virtue of knowledge, right? And had you given me this card 10 years ago, I'd be like, ooh, double your stuff. I'm pretty sure you can build, like, a deck full of Panharmonicons. Like, just literally, there's so many Panharmonicon effects today that I don't know that this matters anymore. Like, is this better than Virtue of Knowledge? Is this better than Roaming Throne? Is it better than literal Panharmonicon? So it's... The, the problem is Seven doesn't allow you to double clone. spell. Yeah. But do you need to play a clone Andre that only clones clone your creatures? Like, you normally don't play those effects, right? I mean, it's important to point out that this is the best wording of a panharmonicon. Like, literal panharmonicon, even virtue of knowledge, only works with ETB triggers. And there's a lot of triggers that aren't ETBs, like hitting with equipment, attack triggers, combat damage triggers, that you would like to double up that you can't double up. So I think the wording of this makes it better than the other the other panharmonicons. I think it's just this and Roaming Throne and like Harmonic like Prodigy that. that have the wording that works with any triggers. So it's actually still kind of a rare effect, even in our sea of panharmonicons where we get one every set. Because most of them only work That's with ETB good. triggers. So the important thing is you panharmonicon and then you play a spell immediately to get value so you're not like scuffed, right? And because panharmonicon's four mana, this is feasible. Like you can do that seven or eight. With this, it's hard to double spell because you can't go seven and then four. That's like 11 mana who has that. But you can pre-set up with attack triggers or um, what do you call it? 
uh, fetch lands or something, right? Or like swords or whatever. And then you pa- cast this on seven and then attack and then get, get all the triggers. Value. Yeah, so I, I do I do like that aspect that you can pre-set up the triggers, unlike the the other Panamonicons. And there are also some cards that unlock rooms. So that's worth pointing out, too, that if you're worried about the seven mana cost, there are a couple, like, one mana artifact that's just sack it, pay three, unlock a room or whatever. So there are ways to speed it up. Yeah. Homer, are you like a beaver? Tell me, you don't like Panharmonicon? <laughs> so, it's so much, it's hater? so much mana. What a, it's so what a much hater, mana. If, hater. There's, if there's any way you can, like, yeah, unlock, if you're in the room deck, maybe, mm-hmm. then I'm down <laughs> for it. But, like, it's, it's so much mana. I don't even like the other side, too, where it's, like, three mana clone your own creature. I'm like, eh, okay. Wait, sure. you, like, I, I mean, I guess, like, in a specific deck, right? If you, if you play clones, there's no way you're not playing it. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're a you clone play... deck, then this makes sense, right? Well, no, no, no. I mean, if you have deck. any need for a clone effect at all, you would play this, right? Well, like, most most three-mana copy a creature you control or, like, they have upsides. Like, even Cackling Counterpart has, like, five. I don't even like that one too much either. But there's, like, Glass Pool Mimic, which is, like, a land sometimes when you need yeah. to, like, I, mean, I don't you, know. It's you have like, Phyrexian okay. Metamorph for three-mana, two-life that copies anything, yeah. right? The, the big problem with self-copying is, like, if you don't have a good target... Uh, you mm. you know, with the That's one more true. mana with the clone, you can copy something. But I was burnt so hard in virtue of knowledge. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, it, this is like a really uh. good two mana instant spell that gets value later. And I, I just never use it. I always cut it out of my decks, right? I'm like, theoretically, this is value, but I'm playing like a subpar card. So if I was self-cloning, this card is nuts. But if I'm not, I can't just put in a random deck because I don't want to like clone something bad just to make this card work, right? Like it, it has to have a purpose. But Panharmonicon. It's just better than Virtue of Knowledge. Though, <laughs> well, just I play Panharmonicon, like, Seth. I haven't <laughs> seen Virtue of Knowledge ever played, honestly, like in yeah. my, my play groups. Is this better than Virtue of... It has to be, right? Or else like, what's the point, right? Is I it mean, better? Virtue of Knowledge is Panharmonicon that costs one more mana, but you get the adventure mode yeah. as the upside. I think just the wording on this makes it better. Like, I think working with any trigger, I think it's like hard to overstate. I remember going through this conversation with Roaming Throne when Roaming Throne first played when we were just talking about it. And some of us were like, man, I don't know. And then we just looked through the list of most popular commanders. And it's like every single one has some sort of triggered ability. Like almost like just any deck is going to be naturally doing that. So I think the fact that it works with all of that stuff makes it better. Even at seven mana, I think it's still worth. Roaming Throne was four mana. I feel like if Roaming <laughs> Throne was like six mana, nobody would even. But Roaming well, Throne I guess only works with a certain it, creature type. Wizards yeah. got set with the, it's a free card, right? <laughs> it's it's free. Like free mana. You get a somewhat reasonable spell, and then you have a free card hey. sitting there. But remember, <laughs> if a farewell goes off, your free card goes away, right? Like it's a, it's sitting on the battlefield as an enchantment. So a vein of progress True. or something will kill it if it, you know, before you unlock it. So there, there is a, there a is caveat risk. to that. Yeah. All right. Krim, hit us with a card. What milk card okay. do you have for us? <laughs> I have naturally, I, I liked Meat Hook Massacre. And so I had to bring up the sequel. And so we went from the meatball to now the meatloaf. I am here. I think that, you know, whatever. Constructed uh, 60 card players will poop on this card. That's fine. But I think Meat Hook Massacre 2, the sequel to the Meat Hook Massacre, is XX Quad Black Legendary Enchantment. And it enters each player sacrifices X creatures. Whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay three life. If you do return that card under your control with a finality counter on it. And whenever an, a creature an opponent control dies, they may pay three life. If they don't, return that card under your control with a finality counter on it. So this is absurd. I would pay four mana just for this. I don't care about the X. The, the double X spell, that's just going to be like, hey, late game, I drew this pretty sweet, right? I get to scale it, do some fun stuff. But for the most part, I would just play this as a four mana enchantment. And both of these abilities, this to me, I think feels like a Turgrid kind of thing, but a light, like a more balanced Turgrid. It's a nice blend between the lantern half of Turgrid and Turgrid herself. So, and then on top of that, with the, with the second half of it, but then the, the first half of it is just whenever a creature you control dies, you may pay three life. And then that is where it's like, okay, well, cool. If your opponents are paying three life, you're not getting anything from them. That's okay. Because you can still get your own stuff back with this. I think this card is huge. I'm on board. I, I will I will pay stocks in the, the meatloaf. 
Um, the me- the it, meatloaf like, massacre, baby. I've seen, I've seen a lot of like I've seen, every single time I saw it, it kind of reminds me of another card, Gisa Glorious Resurrector, which like just yeah. exiles uh, creatures your opponents are uh, the die, and then you get to get them back, but they have decayed. And this one, they can pay through life and deny you a creature if it's a really good one, and they will. But there's going to be some stuff that you get for free, and then most importantly, though, uh, the stuff that you have that dies just comes back for 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 three life. Um, and yeah, it has finality. Who cares? You're getting it for no mana back uh, for a second round. And then there's also ways if you if you are actually building around finality, there are ways of moving the counters or removing the counters too. So there's build around potential. You don't. They're not always oh, gone forever. So I do like it just casting it for four mana, and then. If you are in mono black, it's a mono black card. It's, it costs quadruple mm. black. So it adds a lot of devotion um, if you're like going for Nicholas and stuff. But if you're a mono black, you're like a coffers deck, you know, usually they make a lot of mana. So later on in the game, you can just play this as a board wipe too. Um, so I like it. Yeah, I'd like probably it. play it in like any mono black deck. It just seems fun. It seems like a fun card to have on the battlefield, like stealing your opponent's creatures, getting your stuff back. Gonna be hard, like Tomer said, to cast outside of mono black. But if I'm playing mono black and got Nykthos and Coffers, I think I run this every time. I think you need a plan for this. I think this is a card that gets you killed. If you play four triple black and play it and just <laughs> leave it there, everyone's gonna murder you, right? They're like, well one board wipe goes off like you know you win right so they got to start hitting your face so you combo it right you go triple black or uh, quad black and then you go toxic deluge right and then you you take the whole board with you but like, you can't just play this fairly right like cuz you play this and then you just play like an edict like an edict that affects everyone like a merciless executor or whatever like one of those things it's insane value so you can't slap it down. I think you get murdered immediately. So you got to make sure you take the whole board when this thing <laughs> comes down to make sure you don't get murdered with it. And then they might actually just murder you still, right? They might just all pay three life and then like come after you because Krim said this is like Turgrid. And you know how everyone loves Turgrid, right? Like They do. Turgrid on enchantment? Like, <laughs> no, right? You're getting instantly murdered. So you better win immediately, right? Or have a stranglehold on the game when you cast this. So this one's going to be tight. I... But, uh, Oh, Turgid would be way less salty if you could pay three yeah. life to keep your cards. I, I I actually think the comparison is pretty weak, personally. Like, I, this Turgid is a miserable card. I think people will leave this as like I said it's a, a relatively Turgrid. fun card. Okay, very very okay. How is very this balanced fun? Turgid. It also doesn't <laughs> require discard, right? You're not like stripping everybody's hands. You're just killing creatures, which is like very, I don't know, tame. So I think let's it's say, best let, in let, aristocrats. If you're monoblock aristocrats. Arch enemy. Okay, and then I play four mana, and I play a meat hook massacre, and I and I pass the turn. Are you not immediately going to try to murder me, or or try to disenchant this or something? You're going to let me untap with it. This is a half combo piece that has pretty devastating results, right? Like, is it this automatic kill? I mean, I uh, is it. (laughs) <laughs> is it actually an automatic like maybe like i'd be somewhat scared i guess it would depend on what my board was like i feel like the fact that i can just pay three to deny it from you if i'm at like 35 40 life and have two or three creatures i'm like it's like a punisher card right it's when you see like dash hopes and you're like oh i got that mono black counter spell they're never gonna pay the five life and i'm like dude i'm just gonna pay the five life you will never counter a spell with dash hopes ever i what if i don't pay the life like that what about life i'm less worried about that though like i I think this is this is best for like mono black aristocrats like if you're in jadar or like the new braids or whatever uh then you're then it doesn't matter what your opponents are choosing like they can give you the card they could not give you the card but the point is that you're going to be sacrificing a bunch of random stuff and it's going to come back for free well not for free but you have to pay life. life but like are also aristocrats is one of the best uh places to pay life because you have blood artists you have Zulport cutthroat you have uh the i forget the triple ayara or whatever i think it's called uh you gain life incidentally just by sacrificing things so you can pay for that pretty easily and then it's also great in terms of okay po- people are going to be attacking you they're going to try and kill you well Model Black Aristocrats usually just has a bunch of crap on the battlefield. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay, attack me. I'll block with this random throw. I'll block with this thing I was going to sacrifice anyway. Now I'm going to sacrifice it at instant speed. It's all good. I get it back. comes back. I, I, I drain you for two. Um, Keep that going. I don't know. I, just, like, uh, I think it, it fits well. Just so people play it correctly, uh, the finality counter 
does mean if you got blood artists and stuff, when the finality creature dies, it's not going to trigger any of that stuff because it's a replacement effect. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Like it's a little bit less exciting in Aristocrats than it might look at first glance if you've never Vampire played with Nasty Counters before. <laughs> <laughs> Solemnity. Yeah, Solemnity. You we paid five life. Nesting Grounds. <laughs> Nesting Grounds is another gun that's on yeah. the land that does Counter that. Yeah, the Hex Mage. Hex, there's like a Phyrexian version of the Hex thing. Hex Mage or whatever. I don't know. I do Here's the question for Seth. Do you warp your mana to play this? You, no, I, you're, I'm you're just a bounce land I, enjoyer. I, you're a colorless land enjoyer. I'm just gonna like, find. I'm Holy just gonna Crim can easily cast this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna like, tutor up my Urborg. I'm just gonna tutor up my Urborg, <laughs> and then we'll be good. <laughs> uh, I used to just start sniping every Urborg I see just to punish. I, you know, that's unironically, I think, a very good strategy. <laughs> oh, I, my decks would like... stop functioning sometimes, yeah. <laughs> well, I want to say one, one key takeaway. I remember somebody in the comments section left this. They said in one of the commander clashes, they're like, honestly, if you are not, like, reliant on an Urborg, not running Urborg in your deck is actually a huge high, like, high value play in like our group because like half the other people are relying on your Urborg for their, their <laughs> life to work. So yes. it's like if you just don't run it, if you don't need it, don't run Urborg because you're ac it's actually helping your opponent sometimes more than it helps you. Wait. We have helped Richard a lot. Yeah, get him out of fire, man. Numerous times. Wait, wait, why are you calling me? I only play the Temple of the False God early because there's a cradle. If there's no, if there's no Yavavaya, I don't play it, okay? I'll just play something else. It just don't, don't, don't pretend. It choppers, it doesn't tap for mana. <laughs> man. The Maze of it. I just do it because I can, okay? All right, Tomer, hit us with a card. All right, I have I have one that's uh pretty aggressive. I'm I'm also not quite sure how best to utilize it, so I want to field it for everybody, but I feel like it has a lot of potential. This one is Giggling Skitter Spike. Um it is a four mana colorless artifact creature toy. It's a one one indestructible, and whenever it attacks, blocks, or becomes a target of a spell, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. And you could pay five mana to monstrosity five, which means if it's not monstrous, you put five plus one plus one counters on it and becomes monstrous. So by itself, if it's attacking, blocking, or you target it with a spell, uh, it has a starting power of one. So it's going to deal one damage to each opponent. And then by itself too, if you pay five more mana into it, it becomes a six, six. And then whatever it's attacking, blocking, blah, 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 it's going to deal six damage to each opponent. I feel like this card is going to be really, really good in like any decks of like plus one, plus one counters. Any way of like increasing its power is going to increase the amount of damage on it. And also it's a ripe target for like anything that uh, you can enchant with it that cares about dealing damage, but not necessarily combat damage. Like for example, Curiosity, you deal damage with this. You're going to draw three cards, one for each opponent. If you get a life gain somehow, life link or whatever, uh, then you're going to gain a whole bunch of life in the process. So there's like a lot of things you can do with it, but like I don't know. Do you do you think there's like a good way of like really abusing this card? Because I feel like it has a lot of potential. I'm just not sure what I'd be doing with it. I feel like in certain decks, I think there are. So my first thought was some sort of like aura Z style deck where you're like, or like an Ivy style deck, something where you're like casting a lot of things that are targeting it. Targeting. Another one would be like mutate. It seems like absurd in mutate since it gives you an instructable, <laughs> indestructible creature to mutate onto oh. and the mutate will also trigger it. So I think in decks like that, it would be really cool. It seems tricky to make work. Like if you're not building around it, it seems tricky to make work. Like maybe is it good enough on its own? If you can monstrous it I don't know. and like get it up to six damage, then it's actually kind of scary. Like you don't want to block it when you attack with it. It's dealing a ton of damage. Maybe it's just good enough on its own. Or what about like huge pump spells? What's that? What's the unset pump spell that can pump like infinitely or something? It pumps based on, oh, do you remember in Biggin? So the, the pump spells, <laughs> yeah, the, oh. you need a second one, right? Because when you cast a pump spell, the trigger goes on the stack. It does the damage and then it gets pumped. So you need to follow it with a second spell or an attack or something to get the, yeah. the trigger of the, the pump spell. But this you part is hilariously broken. Attack. Right, if you just play Voltron or Auras or something, like there's a there's a ton of Auras that give you plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment you control. Mm -hmm. It is like trivial to get a 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30 creature. 
And now you don't even need to attack, right? You, you just keep casting your, your cantrippy, uh, enchantressy cards, and then you just like combo kill the table like instantly. So I think you've played this in Enchantress. Anything that plays like all all's glitters, like that kind of effect, hilariously broken. And because of that, you can't play this fairly. <laughs> like if you play it fairly, it's like playing Phyrexian Altar fairly, right? You're like, oh yeah, I'm not doing anything with it. everyone's like, uh <laughs> right? Like so yeah, I, if you I attack it, you're just doing one damage, just like whatever. Yeah, yeah. I was there, thinking like, oh I can put curiosity on it, I can draw three cards. Yeah, like if you curiosity, fun. it's crazy, right? <laughs> So you can't really play it fairly. You got to just take the heat when you play this, and then you might as well play oh, broken things. Grafted exoskeleton. What about that? Ooh. Like It's an equipment Poison that like, I think it oh, pumps yeah. the creature, yeah. and then it like, is in fact. Uh, ah! It doesn't trigger oh, wanna, on the equip. I want to do that. <laughs> Give it the yeah. effect. It's poison. Yeah. Oh, I'm giving it in fact. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm going to be honest with you. I have an indestructible deck. It's my Miku deck. And this is th this is what I've been waiting for. I I want this so <laughs> bad in my Miku deck. Oh my the five color that's Child of Alara deck. I no. I I'm not even uh, using it for any uh -huh. of the attack stuff. I am just using it because it looks creepy and it's funny to have this in a Miku deck and it's indestructible. That's it. it is this not the toy from Toy Story? I feel like it it's does a, look like the toy from Toy Story. Right? There's a creepy yeah. head and a spider and a kid yeah. in Toy Story. Yeah, yeah. that's like, like the, the, bad guy, the older right? kid who's the the bully has like does it to his toys. I don't even yeah. terrorized by that. <laughs> this, I also, this is also cracked in any red deck, right? Where if you have a damage doubler, you literally just cast this and then monstrous mm -hmm. it. That's all you do, right? You just mm -hmm. monstrous it and then attack, and then you would deal. Six times two or times three or something to everybody. So it's like true. Chandra's incinerator. That's that, like, when you deal non combat damage, you do that much damage to like target creature, which is really fun. I step effects. I also like that it hits each opponent. There's not like sometimes when the cards hit one opponent, the person has it and they got to think forever. Like, oh, do I hit Phil? Do I hit Richard? I've been in that uh, position so where you got to think. I just like hit everyone. <laughs> no one's got to think about it. Everyone's taking the damage. <laughs> Just shadow spear gain sixty. Okay, go <laughs> right. Like I think no. <laughs> so broken. Okay. Uh oh, it's my turn, and I did you a solid, uh -huh. Seth. I, I looked through the list of cards, and I see that your favorite card ever printed was not here. God. So I added it for you. Right uh, it's oh. called <laughs> it's called Withering Torment. Tuna Black Instant. Destroy target creature or enchantment. You lose two life. This is so good. The second destroy enchantment spell in black, Feed the Swarm, is one of the most popularly played cards in Commander. Uh, this one uh, is instant speed. <laughs> For one more mana, you get instant speed, and that makes all the difference, right? A sorcery speed versus instant speed is a huge deal. Uh, and also, you lose less life, probably. Like, I think Feed the Swarm yeah. is mana value. This is just two. So when you kill that omniscience, you don't feel so bad. But instant speed, black removal. So Hell yeah. reanimator decks, rejoice. You have a second out to rest in peace. <laughs> you have a second out to rest in peace now. I think this card will be auto-included a lot of mono black decks. Oh, I don't include I mean, yeah. my Toshiro Umazawa deck. It's an instant. It's perfect. Perfect. Thank this you, is, Wizard. This is a Great very card. good card. Yeah, Great and card. it would uh, it makes Love sense it. it would go into Shiro, right? This is a yeah. very good uncommon uh, for for Commander. I I more importantly, I think out of all of us here, you know, I'm just very curious. How does Seth feel about? How do you feel about this? Seth? That's how you really feel. <laughs> yeah, uh, Seth, speak into the I, microphone, please. <laughs> I absolutely hate this card. I, this is my least favorite card in the set by a huge margin. Black shouldn't be. Black does not need a generous gift. It does not need a beast within. Why are we giving black beast withins now? This is the black beast within. Black shouldn't be able to just deal with an enchantments. Their black has so many powerful things that it does better than anyone else. It doesn't need to be able to blow up enchantments. And I don't want to say good. But this is better than feed the swarm. This better than feed the swarm. <laughs> and that's already like a demonic tutor tier card in commander. This is an on another auto include in every mono black deck. The cards, it's such a mistake. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> How do you really feel about it? Uh, really? The card that <laughs> it's grinds it. This is it. I, I this be, is the one. I was, I was telling my Twitch chat that I will be 10, 20 years from now. I will be literally the old man yelling at the clouds <laughs> about black and jammy removal. It's just, I'm never going to like it. Even if I should, I'm never going to, I'm never going to like it. <laughs> 
I mean, it makes sense. Like, like, look, I think that if you don't give. OK, I guess this is unfair because then they have to start printing, like, I guess, counter spells. But they already kind of give <laughs> counter spells in other colors anyways. Right. No, they don't. Like, like <laughs> counter <laughs> spells. Reprieve is reprieve is a yeah. bounce off the where, stack. Sure. Where is the and anger then, about reprieve, Seth? You know, yeah, where, where's reprieve's I, anger? I, I, where's, I have, have mono white laughs or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Manatize. Whatever. Manatize. Literally, manatize. Can you not use that same argument for this then? Well, I mean, Black already had Feed the Swarm and other things. So you, naturally, you would see more. I mean, I don't know. I don't think this is that big a deal. I, I, out of like, it's cool that it exists. I'm actually happy that it exists. Oh. It's also like, so, would you run this outside of like Mono Black or Rakdos, right? Like, would you ever put uh, any white or black? That Mono Black, uh, Rakdos, Demir. I think those are the colors you run it in oh, pretty yeah, much Red, every time. Luke can't do it. But you wouldn't you ever run blue. it instead of like a green disenchant or anything, right? Or a white disenchant. I feel like as long as it's not as good as any of the things that the best colors do, I think it's fine, right? I mean, I would not, yeah. would I run it over disenchant the card? Yes. Would I run it over beast within? No, because it hits anything. Yeah. But I think this is like, I don't know. It's too close to comfort for me for being a really good, like a good removal spell. I honestly, personally, I'm okay with black. I don't think black should kill enchantments, but if they have to kill enchantments, I would rather have it be like meaningfully worse than than white and green. When to me, this looks a lot like beast within. Yeah. Like it's, it's very this is close meaningfully to worse. This is like, so much like worse. Like Tomer said, you would fit. never play this in green or white or anything like that because it's actually like Terra bad, right? You're like, well. three mana's murder. No one plays murder. They play zero mana destroy target creature or exile target creature, right? So Seth has the boomer mentality. I actually have the boomer mentality too, but the boomer mentality is colors must strictly adhere to color pie and you cannot have the effect. However, 2024 mm. Wizards design is... You can have an effect off your color. It just needs to be bad, right? So this, is, the this is a bad spell, but since it's Black's only option, you would run. You would never run Feed the Swarm in a non-Black deck, right? Sorcery speed removal, like, that's a joke. Like, lose life equal to mana value? That's, like, a terrible okay. bad joke, right? <laughs> but Black cannot remove enchantments, so you must play it to get rid of Rest in Peace. So this is a bad card, except for Mono Black, in which case... It is the only card that does its thing, so it's great, <laughs> right? So, but then I'll give it the pass. Just, but I see your complaint about color pie homogenizing. But that, shouldn't but. we? Shouldn't we have like a, I don't know, double black counter target spell? You lose life equal to its mana cost. Like what we you already have worse that. than the best yeah. version of that effect. So Ooh, like, we yes. will get that. We yes. will get that eventually. Watsi, write that down. Write that down. Tashiro needs. Isn't that? Uh, <laughs> Is that good? We're gonna get there, right? Why does blue the only one that can counter spell? <laughs> also, I mean, well, it, wasn't... it's been apparent that that green already did fifty other things prior to black, right? So, like, if if where is this rage when green does everything, everything? But I, but I think like, that's... no one complains about white card draw. No one complains about red treasure token generation. Like they're they're giving all the colors uh, card draw. They're giving all the colors ramp, and then they have to give black. The finish of removal, right? They gotta be able to remove enchantments. So, like, where's the rage of trouble in Paris? Why, why do they have right? to kill enchant? Like, I don't understand the reason why. No one has ever in a million years told me why. Like, gave me an explanation for so, why. So you can play mono black without feeling terror bad when someone plays a rest in peace on you. <laughs> right? <laughs> is that really it? Mono black players got salty about rest. Essentially, in peace. right? So you can play so we, mono white with feeling right. terror bad that you have no cards in hand as everyone else. <laughs> has I like think a million cards I think it's hand. mostly because they they keep having like enchantment sets which is more of a newer phenomenon like newer like the past decade but like like think about how many how many colors can actually deal with enchantments white green that's it to, we don't have blue the, blue can removal. bounce it we don't have blue, red blue can counter blue it can black can bounce discard it. It. Really it black can deal with it <laughs> no 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 <laughs> wait, 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 there, wait, needs wait, to, wait. there needs to be Just something that each <laughs> color can do once yeah. something hits the board no i think as long yeah, as it, no, I I disagree with that because if you're a blue deck and you get this thing that no one else gets, which is to answer literally any card with counter spell, you should 
suffer if someone manages to slip something through and get it on the board. There should be things that if they get through your Who endless wall spells? of counter spells, that there is like a downside to that for you. Because you get something but no one else has gets, which is done that? unconditional answers and counter spells. And I, so I know it kind of falls apart with Commander a little bit because you can't play Thoughtseize with a straight face in Commander. But that's part, part of my argument against this card is Black deals with anything with discard. You know, you should get punished when certain permanent types slip through and get on the battlefield because you get this upside that no one else gets, which is I take your best card out of your opening hand for one mana with Thoughtseize. <laughs> I feel like this is funny that you believe that you want to have the punishment come in here, whereas I feel like there's many other assets of the I, like facets of the game to, that deserve punishing. To go, to we go just got a mono point. blue enchantress. By we're getting the way. so we're we getting got, so distracted, but yeah. To go back to your green point. No, I, I I I poked the bear. I knew you were <laughs> to go back to go back to your green point. I think how they develop green has been a bad thing for Commander. Now look at all of our Commander clashes games where green has all the card draw, all the lands. That's what we. What was green's? weakness it couldn't draw a lot of cards it, it would make a ton of mana but sometimes they wouldn't draw their finisher now we have green that is just heads and tails above everything else because they get to draw all the cards and make all the mana so i feel like there is risk in giving colors things that they don't traditionally have because there was a reason that they designed the game with those colors not having those things but uh, i mean I that's, like look if, if this were a major detriment like i first off i feel like this is more of a 1v1 card than anything else yeah. Like, I think this is a 1v1. V1. <laughs> you can just this, flash no, no, a color this... and add a legitimate spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, in Commander, I don't know. I, I also feel like in Commander, because it's so... There's so many... There's four, there's four players. There's so many things going on. There's so many enchantments. I think Magic as a game has to change. I believe the color pie is still important and still a center part of the mm. game. But as long as it's within line and in the flavor of the color, right? So, like, the way white draws makes sense. Green is the only where I think just literally doesn't make sense. Uh, like everything else, every other color makes sense to me. So far, this makes sense. That okay, if you pay life, you can remove an enchantment. But isn't that a cop out though? Because then you can have black ancestral recall, black counter spell, black land tax. Because you're just like, oh, I paid a life when I played it. Like it's the ultimate cop out argument. <laughs> you, <laughs> well, they have you, necropotence. That's wizards road black maps. That's recall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm uh -huh. I'm arguing for just simply gameplay though. It feels you you hate to play the games where you absolutely. I, I mentioned before in other matchups, I hate the things where I can't interact. Boom pile. Right? Like, oh, I sit here. Boom pile. Boom pile. Yeah. Okay. Boom pile. I, I would never play this because yes. boom pile, oblivious. So boom pile is one card of a hundred. <laughs> it is one card of a hundred. What about, what about like Bad problematic card. lands, right? Like you can't like there's a reason why I hate like Field of the Dead, as I mentioned, is because you can't really interact with it all too easily. Most of the deck can reoccur. Anyways, so I I actually think it's okay that Wizards wants to give Black the opportunity to interact with things they couldn't normally. Because sometimes you just could sit there and get hosed. By some one thing. Like a stacks piece right. that Krim played. <laughs> I play creature stacks pieces first off. All right. So that that concludes uh, our detour into color pie breaking. Uh, <laughs> I could have been a whole episode ranting about that. Back, back, back to dust. That's a future right. episode. Back to, we Sad, got a, I got a good hard. one. I got a good one. Speaking of how good green is at ramping, we got a new green ramp option that I think is actually pretty interesting yeah. in Overlord of the Hauntwood. So it is a five mana, six, five avatar horror. It has an impending mechanic of four for three mana. So you can play it as an enchantment for three mana. Uh, you get its enters trigger, and then after four turns, you want to remove the counters, it'll become a creature. And then it says whenever it enters or attacks, create a tapped colorless land token named everywhere that is every basic land type. So Overlord of the Hot Woods, three mana ramp, it ramps a land that is, I guess, kind of unique. It's a land that makes every color and is every basic land type, which has implications for, like, domain shenanigans, I guess, things like that. Uh, but I think this is a pretty powerful card because then you also get to get that token anytime it attacks. And I think being a token adds an interesting twist to this. That's what makes me most excited about this because there's a lot of mechanics that interact with tokens. We have doubling season effects that double up tokens. We have things that copy tokens that don't copy other permanents. So I think there's a lot that this card actually does. Index that either care about tokens in specific or care about having a land that's every land type to turn on uh, all these spells. And this is a land that's every land type that gets around color identity, which is also pretty unique. Like it's hard to play every land type sometimes because of color identity issues, but this gives you a 
way that you can do it in a mono green deck and turn on all your domain stuff without breaking the the color identity so i think this card's good i don't think it's like open the way busted but i'm planning on jamming it for the short term at least and like all my green decks and seeing how it feels I was about to ask you. I had this on my list, and then I'm like, "No, this card sucks," and I took it off. <laughs> but have... like, so if you play Enchantress, this is crapped, right? Because it comes in as an enchantment. You can draw a card. You can ramp, right? If you're playing a token deck, a popular, you know, deck, a doubling season. But if you had no synergies, would you play this as a three mana ramp a tapped basic, and then four turns later ramp a second one? There's no way you play that, right? You would just play another rampant growth or you know, four mana spell, right? Like, do you say it's a mana fixing basic though? I mean, it is mana fixing and I don't it's know. Green to cast. There's, other, <laughs> there's also the upside that you just don't have to shuffle. <laughs> I don't know how much that's worth <laughs> to people, but gets around oppo agent. Oh yeah. yeah. No oppo agent. No tired. Does it deck from shuffling. Does it deck it? <laughs> doesn't yet. Yeah, doesn't change the order of your library, which sometimes matters, I guess, with some effects. If you have something that controls what's on the top of your deck, but I would say in general, no, I'm not going to replace uh, nature's lore and cultivate with this, but I think there are enough synergies for it where there are going to be decks where it's really good. So I wouldn't just jam it in every deck, uh, but I think that there's enough synergies for it. It's going to be really powerful in the rate shells. I mean, this is just powerful if it gets to start attacking as well, right? So, like, I mean, the old, the the fact that it doesn't get answered immediately for by a board wipe, I it's the same reasons why I think these cards are going to be powerful in standard. It just enters, it does its thing, and then it becomes a body at a later point. I I don't know. I think these are just all good. I think all of them are good. I think every one of this cycle is good. Yeah, it's a very strong. Cycle. I think it's. I think it's it's solid. It's I think it's good in Enchantress. Uh, I think it's good if you have any ways of blinking it. Um, and then I was trying to find out if there was any cards like that are good with it in particular that are like you make make a copy of target token you control. You know, and if we could do it very efficiently. The room. Oh yes. Yes. Wait, is the room a creature? Death. No, the room is a creature. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so this caretaker, like you draw a card off like caretaker's talent and stuff. But then I, I was like scrolling through Scryfall. Okay, City of Death. Okay, three mana saga. It has like a, a, it has six chapters. First chapter, make a treasure <laughs> token. Who cares? But then chapters two to six, uh, create a token that's a copy of target non saga token you control. Hey. Every single turn. That's a combo. Every single turn, you you make a copy of the. Of the land, that's kind of cool. I like that. There's stuff you could it do. There are, yeah. yeah. Caretaker's talent. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. there's effects that do it. I like this. I'm not sold. I guess oh. you guys played a random deck. I'm like, I'm, like if I think Blink and Enchantress is card guy. is insane, right? Uh, if it could somehow attack, a sort of Hearth and Home would be perfect for it, right? Because the <laughs> Hearth and Home. Uh, ramps you want and then blinks so you get a second one but it's not yeah. a creature when you play it for three so you, you gotta do some shenanigans uh, but Enchantress I think is the best one right you play two mana Enchantress you pay three mana play this thing it triggers your Enchantress you ramp and then wait does it does it enter when the last counter is no it doesn't trigger again no it's already on, on yeah removal. already on the battlefield uh, okay uh, Krim there is a card here okay. which you've been asking for for a long time. <laughs> there is. There is. And you know what my favorite thing in like in magic is when you are able to punish the greed, right? The greed drawing. Uh Razorkin Needlehead, red red, has first strike during your turn. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Razorkin Needlehead deals one damage to them. Now, I don't know if this is also a nod to Hellraiser, but if it is, that's dope. Otherwise, just like, oh, God, the art's so good in this. But the effect doing what, you know, kind of Tomer, what you liked, right, about Bowmaster. Well, okay, you like the damage part, not so much the pinging, right? So this solves the yeah. pinging part. So instead of pinging all the X ones, they are just directly taking the damage. And I think that this is just another effect that we need more of. I think... I it, this doesn't do anything absolutely wild. It, it's not flashy. This is just what magic needs more of. This and anti tutoring. That's all. <laughs> that's all I gotta say. And the more of these effects that I see, the happier I am. I actually kind of hate this card, but not for the reason you think. It's not for the reason you think. I actually think that this card is a perfectly fair way to hate on card draw. My problem with this card is. 
I don't think it's good enough for people to play it to hate on card draw. I think that the only people who are going to play this are Krim, because Krim loves his sax pieces, and people who play Not in like... That. <laughs> and people who tune into last week's podcast to hear us debate this for an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> but it's but it's going to be people that play in wheel decks, right? Like, are, are do you actually think people that are not you are going to just run this to hate on card draw or are they going to play in Nekuzar or like some sort of I'm going to burn you out by casting a bunch of wheel strategies. So that's my only question. I'm afraid that it's not actually good enough as a standalone card for people to run it fairly to hate on. And instead, it's just going to be a combo piece for wheel decks. Seth, if I uh, have this out, right, let's just say I have this out and then I have an Axineal out. Axineal O'Hare. That's the combo. <laughs> yep. I am now dealing you with you wheel of fortune. <laughs> I, no, no, no. I, okay. <laughs> I, I won't even, you know me. You know me. I'm not, okay. If I That's have true. a wheel in my deck, it's either unintentionally <laughs> or I have one. Or right? it's attached to a counter so, spell. Yes. Accident. Yeah, <laughs> it's attached to a counter spell. All right. Well, maybe. But, but this, let's just say a mono red deck. Do you really think a mono red deck doesn't have ways to exponentially burn you into the ground with this card? I mean, if you're playing, like, Torbrand or something, sure. Like, if you're building around yeah. it. But, like, is this a card you just jam in random decks to, like, get the card draw player? Because you can do that with Bowmasters because Bowmasters busted. Any deck that has black, you can just jam that and it's going to be worth it. Is this like that? Bowmasters, Bowmasters, if it falls short of Bowmasters, I don't think that's a bad thing. Bowmasters no, I'd agree with that. is a very strong card. And, yeah. and, and for obvious reasons, right? Like, it picks off all the X1s. It's so much more than just burn. But this is an honest red card. And I really like this. So if you were playing a honest. deck that's aggressive, <laughs> like I'm putting this in my humans deck because, you know, the uh, Bowmaster's not a human. This is. Uh, if you're just looking for reach, this card gives you that. I like this. And if you're a mono red deck, more often than not, you have numerous ways to really double the damage, triple the damage. Add more Tor Brands, O'Hare, Axineals. There's a lot that Red can do with this card. If I'm Rakdos, even like Drain or, or, or Burn or Aristocrats, anything along those lines, if I care about withering your health down, this goes in that. I think I think it's it's a build around, and there's a lot of homes for it, like like Krim says. Because, like for example, uh, one of the new face commanders for the precons, Valgavoth, cares about dealing one damage. Like, make your opponents lose life every single turn on their turn. And this one literally does that. So it triggers Valgavoth every single turn cycle uh, for the maximum value. Um, I also notice, very weirdly, the top most is it, uh, most played is it commander is not a Niv Mizzet or a Spell Slinger. It's actually um, a Warhammer commander called Gryson yeah. Starn, which yeah. cares about dealing exactly one damage to your opponents, and then Gryson will deal two damage to that same opponent. So yeah, just like Torbran, it allows you to do like ping shenanigans. And again, you throw you throw like a curiosity on that. You throw like an Ophidian <laughs> Eye or something. Everything Every single time you curiosity. feel like one damage, you draw that card. It's so good. It, Curiosity stops keep can, going or, up. <laughs> the needlehead doing the damage is big. And one thing that is nice about this is if you notice that second line of text is whenever an opponent draws a card, it, this doesn't nor like you know some of the cards are like they exclude the first draw each turn. This is just when they draw. That's a damage. Yeah, so you're gonna damage each turn cycle for sure. I'm. Yeah, I mean, I would play in those homes. I'm still not really sold on just it being like. A, a very good hate card because I feel like it's a build around that you can only play in decks that like I don't know that synergize with it rather than something you can just jam to be like oppo agent where you're like I just want to hate on tutors so I'll play this in any deck I feel like this is a little more build around for me it's a combo piece like, and because it's a combo piece it's a bad hate card <laughs> like if you try to just slap this down and be like wow oh, you guys can't draw too many cards everyone will kill you because they're expecting the damage doubler, the wheel, the the whatever to back this up, right? And they can't just let this stick around, so they got to remove it or you. Uh, Richard. I, I would it, like it if it you can somehow not combo. <laughs> like, it can only deal you, one you, damage. You it's never more than one damage. <laughs> <laughs> only triggers You mentioned only how everyone's going to kill you. <laughs> but how many times have I played cards like Roiling Vortex and things like that? And yes, you all gun for it, and you gun for me, but by the time you fi like you you end me, you're all at like sub like under twenty. Yeah, the, that, that's because like, you built your deck around burning people out, right? So yeah, so if yeah. you are burning people out, Razorkin Needlehead is really good, right? And then you will add your combos in to make sure it ends the game. 
But who cares if they <laughs> if go I'm playing for a you random red deck and I want to hit on card mark. draw? This is not the answer. <laughs> right? <laughs> it is a piece. It's a piece, one of many, yeah. but it's nice to see more of these effects. Yeah. I like it. Uh, all right. One day last we're going to go on the rune flare trap. Uh, last card, mm. Tomer. Okay. Okay. This card, okay. We, we talk about powerful cards. We talk about really good cards. This card is just a me card, okay? Sometimes you got to have delicious trash as well. And this one might have potential, but it's also trash, and I love it. Um, so this is Marina Vandrell's Grimoire. This is a six-mana blue legendary artifact. It says when it enters, if you cast it, draw five cards. All right, off to a great start. Uh, you have no maximum hand size, and don't lose the game for having zero or less life. Whenever you gain life, you draw that many cards. And whenever you lose life, discard that many cards. Then if you have no cards in hand, you lose the game. So this is like a new Lich effect where uh, if you gain life, you draw cards. That's awesome. But if you lose life, uh, you discard cards. And then if you don't have any more, you just, you just lose and you die. Uh, for six mana, you draw five cards immediately if you cast it. That's good. No hand size. That's good. <laughs> Uh, you don't lose the game at zero. That's like all all cool things that a lich does, but it's just like yeah, if you're not gaining life and then somebody just like punches you in the face really hard, you die. <laughs> Which oh, you stifle, you stifle. I like it. <laughs> or like, I like it. One of the super unique parts about this because like the comparison I thought of right away was lich's mastery. Lich's mastery yeah. though a little bit different, right? Because it keeps you from dying in any way. You just can't lose the game with it on the battlefield. But when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. There's not that restriction on this, so you can like play this and do things with it and draw a bunch of cards and like then bounce it back to your hand to avoid losing the game if you're about to take a bunch of damage. So I actually think that aspect of it makes it kind of exciting. Like there, oh, what deck are you gonna play this in though, Tomer? What is what is a home for so this? I'm slam dunking it in my Zedru deck because my Zedru <laughs> deck gains life on upkeep very reliably. So I'm going to draw a bunch of cards. And then, you know, if things are getting a little bit dicey for me, uh, people are going to be attacking me or whatever. I just donate it away. Or I have like I have like an army to attack you with. And then I just give you the grimoire and then I attack you. And like you're you haven't been drawing a whole bunch of extra cards off this or anything. I just donate to you before combat and then hopefully kill you with it. Which I think is very funny. That actually seems pretty sweet. What about life game? This is the I most, mean, yeah. This mean. is the most exciting card in the set. I, like I, I was telling Seth before, that, I looked at all the cards in the set. And I'm like, yeah, there's some powerful cards here, but they kind of just do like what you expect them to do and whatever. But like, Blue hasn't had a Lich type card no. ever, right? And this is some strange Never. build around. I think it's really good. I I, I think you can like. Play this, gain a bunch of life, draw a million cards, and then sack it or get rid of it like quite quickly. That's true. Right? And then you can you always stifle the trigger. Me. You can always like wall up with propaganda, ghostly prison. Uh, the only problem is it's hard to mono blue. Like, I think the ideal home is some kind of Azorius deck because with white, uh, you have access to fog, you have access to free damage prevention, like the, the pact of intervention, I think. Uh, and then you have easy life gain. Like, imagine you have a soul sister on the battlefield, like a Sarah, a Sarah, no, a soul uh, warden. And soul, then yeah. you warden. just play this, right? And then people play creatures, you keep drawing cards, you just keep doing the thing. So I can see how this works, right? And ideally, you just play this, draw 20 cards in a turn cycle, untap farewell, <laughs> right? And then yep. like, be safe from everything, right? So I think this is the best Lich card. We've had like the, the the real lich cards are super scary, right? Because they remove the lich card, you're dead on the spot, right? Yeah. And it's hard. You're not in the right color to protect yourself, right? You're in black. They have targeted removal or sweeper. You're kind of screwed. At least blue. After you've drawn twelve cards, you have a lot of free counter spells, a lot of bounce, a lot of stifles, like a lot of stuff to keep yourself alive. So I really like this, and this is the most exciting card from the set. Is it good? No, probably yeah. not. It's a build around me. But maybe if you build around it hard enough, it becomes exceptional like that. It has that upside. But you wouldn't jam this in a random deck. And... Genuinely solid. Also, wait a minute. Seth, in a random deck? No, yes. Wait, Is this a color pie break? <laughs> wait, why would it be a color pie break? It's a blue card draw spell. Blue is like the Damage card draw prevention. color. But, but, the, <laughs> but the idea of a lich spell 
It's, it's not a lich. based in black. It's not a lich spell though. It's a grim or grim. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right. Don't all look right. too close ask. at my hypocrisy. By the way, I'm playing that piece of form effect, and all my black dag says that even if I complain about it, I forgot to mention that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I had a question for Seth too. Uh, is the is the grim or grim going to be the burst against, against the odds? Uh. It's on the short list, but I'm leaning towards the win the game room as being the first against the odds. But this is like definitely a tier against the odds fodder from the set. It's very close to the top. And I'm actually like, I, I love playing Lich's Mastery. So I'm excited to play this card and see what we can do. And I think we kind of glossed over. It's a six mana draw five, which is actually a lot of cards for five or for six mana. So like even just by itself, it's a big source of card advantage. Okay, maybe it's better than I gave it credit for, it, though. But I'm putting it in Zedru. So yeah, it's going to be sweet. I mean, Zedru is a counter. You just put any bad card, you're going to just give it away. <laughs> right? No, the because be a I don't one care man about... enchantment. You lose the game on your upkeep. You're like, yeah. oh, it's great, Zedru. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't care about the giving other it away. Card. I care about it because it says lose the game. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what I want. <laughs> If anything, if Tor puts it in Zedru deck, you probably don't want to play the card. That's <laughs> a terrible downside. As a general <laughs> rule, yeah. I threw a game playing Zedru because I put nine lives on the battlefield. Or I was going, I said I, I could cast nine lives on the battlefield, but I couldn't donate it to anybody. And then uh, my opponent uh, told me, like, uh, hey, you know, you can't take damage. You, you, the damage should be prevented if you just played your nine lives and kept it on your side of the battle, right? <laughs> like, I literally never read the card. I, I just read the, <laughs> the just game part. The game. <laughs> so I just, like, I threw the game. I threw the game because I didn't, like, just play the, the card in my hand because I thought it was useless in uh. other texts. So maybe the rest of the text is good on this one. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So that concludes uh, our most uh, exciting cards from Duskmorn. Let us know in the comments if we've missed anything. I think we, we hit all the power hitters and then also some uh, some spicy jank here. Uh, so let us know in the comments. And then we'll see you all back here next week.